Mina, konbanwa, Jesus freaking gamer here. Joshua chapter 19, verse 51. These are the inheritances which Eliezer the priest, Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers of the tribes of the children of Israel divided as an inheritance by lot in Shiloh before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of meeting. So they made an end of dividing the country. So they, if you read the chapter, they've just finished dividing up the entire land of Israel, or what would be the land of Israel, into all the sections that the 12 tribes were going to go in. So... They said it, it was in place, they were ready to then resume conquering the land. And I believe this was also in light of Joshua's soon death, because he was getting up there in age. And interestingly enough, what they did was they cast lots to determine the inheritance, to determine these land regions that all of the tribes of the children of Israel would get. And casting lots essentially, think of it as, well, quite frankly, uh, gambling or fortune telling. It's like you shake... You shake some stones or you grab some sticks and you throw them down, you see what lands, and then the result determines yes or no or who gets what. Almost like a divining technique. And obviously God can determine the role of a dice. Obviously that's well within his range of control, like absolutely everything in existence is. However, it's a lot less precise and less detailed than when you read back in the book of Exodus. I'm, my Bible's down there. I, whenever you see me pointing, that's because my Bible, I, I read it and then I set it down. So I'm, I, so I'm not just pointing at something random down below. That's my Bible. See, I'm going to pick it up. It's my Bible. I promise. Anyway, that was a tangent. <clears throat> the children of Israel were divided into the land of Canaan, which would soon be the land of Israel, by lot. Whereas you read in the book of Exodus, Moses got the Ten Commandments by God literally himself writing the Ten Commandments into stone with his finger. And Moses was commanded word by word the details of the Ark of the Covenant, the Tabernacle of Meeting. And here, something also of pretty darn big importance, which tribe would get which chunk of land and which you know, group of cities, throw the dice. Okay, that's number seven. That matches up to Zebulun, so... Uh, wait a second. Okay, so it means you get this land mass right here. Or so, I, I don't know how casting lots exactly work. I don't think anyone knows exactly what biblical casting lots look like, what stones were used, or anything like that. It's theorized that the Urim and the Thummim were something like that. It was like um, a casting of lots that was built into the um, Ark of the Covenant, or at least into the Tabernacle of Meeting. All of this to say, that's not nearly as precise as what Moses got. Moses was hearing God directly. Joshua and the elders cast lots. And as you read the remainder of the Old Testament... It's kind of like what the end of uh, Deuteronomy said. Since then, a, a prophet hasn't arisen like Moses and did the things that he did. It's a lot less spiritual, a lot less exciting, and honestly, God seems a little less involved. I mean, let's be honest. The casting of lots could be up to random chance. Yeah, God can control it, but and obviously God controlled them getting into the land, the, into the promised land, the land of Canaan, by parting the Jordan River as he parted the Red Sea. The Jordan River is a little bit smaller than the Red Sea. Casting lots not nearly as cool as yet. God gave me the exact dimensions. He told me what they were, and I see it in my mind, what the Ark of the Covenant should be. Not as exciting, not as spiritual. All of that to say that God can use things that are natural. God is working in our everyday lives, even when it's not big and miraculous and just mind-blowing. God's in the simple things as well. He's in the day-to-day. -day. He was just as with Joshua in the casting of lots as he was with Moses in the commanding of how he wanted the Ark of the Covenant built. Although it might possibly say something about the depth of relationship that Moses had with God as opposed to what Joshua had with God. Obviously, Joshua was a good man, a God-fearing man, and a warrior of the Lord. But I would dare say he didn't have what Moses had. So don't be disheartened. God's in every single aspect. Even the small ones, even the ones that aren't big and phenomenal and supernatural. 
but there's certainly room for us to strive and hunger for more. I love you guys. Thanks for watching. God bless.